introduction to linear transformations here uh, just a fancy word for functions applied to systems thus from systems we get matrices so we call a matrix transformation a linear transformation when one set of vectors are mapped to another set of vectors this mapping is a function uh, you recall from algebra denoted by f f is said to map a set of vectors suppose here one of our supersets rn vectors from it to another set of vectors let's say suppose rm here this mapping or this function transfer is simply done by a matrix and it's the multiplication of the matrix times a vector so we uh, formally say that uh, F maps uh, vectors from Rn to the space of Rm. Um, the, the formal uh, setting of this, and I say here formally, uh, but uh, I think uh, to be true to the idea of transformations, the, the formal statement is some transformation T that it maps vectors uh, in V to some uh, vector in another vector space called W where uh, V is said to be the domain and W is said to be the co-domain or the image. So let's uh, look further and, and the goal here would be in uh, sections, these two sections is to, uh, this one and the next section is to connect what we have learned from algebra in terms of um, taking a function, being able to figure out uh, does this function have an inverse? Um, and, and back then you talked about vertical line test, horizontal line test, one for determine, determining whether or not um, the set was indeed a function. And then after that, you use the other line test to determine whether or not the function had an inverse. Well, actually, what you were trying to do was to show that the function was one-to-one. -one. Um, so here we will show one-to-oneness onto also another concept uh, in linear algebra and also in abstract algebra. And then from there, we can form the, the idea or the notion of a bijective uh, space. Uh, here, the, the idea of one-to-one -one is uh, uh, that uh, terminology is the same as an injective function or injective space if the transformation or the function um, is onto then we say that it is uh, here the the idea of a subjective uh, space or function and then if if it's both satisfied one to oneness and also onto we say that we have a bijective function or bijective mapping or bijective transformation um, we we use this terminology for one-to-one uh, -one and onto to say that uh, the system that we're considering is isomorphic um, uh, that is that um, it is the same as uh, another space uh, that has uh, similar dimensions which is a very cool concept uh, in the study of algebra. So we will get to that in the next section, but basically that's, that's where we're trying to uh, go. Now here's the cool thing about this section that I want to bring out, and, and I think is important because students take these courses uh, in math, calculus, differential equations, abstract algebra, discrete uh, math, linear algebra, uh, statistics, probability, all of these classes that we have. Uh, partial differential equations, but sometimes you take these courses, but have you ever uh, uh, wondered uh, what is the purpose, the goal of this course? Um, if it's a linear algebra, what is a linear algebra? You know, I think um, it is futile to go through a course like linear algebra and not even know what a, a linear algebra is. Like, what the heck is that? So in this section, uh, we're going to explore uh, define, uh, categorize exactly what the heck a linear algebra is. Hey, you don't want to go through a course like this and not really even know, 
you know, isn't that something? Have you ever been asked, you know, things like that where you get all this information to tell people and then they come back and say, it's the simplest thing, like, what is what is that? And you can't even answer it, you know? So um, when that happened to me, I was taking some courses in theology and one of the professors in the math department asked me um, about one of, one of the concepts, very simple concept that I just assumed I didn't really have an answer for. And so the professor asked me, well, what does that mean? And I couldn't really answer. And I was like, wow, that's a pretty good question. I should know that. So I think the same thing with linear algebra. What is it? So um, let's look at this, this mapping, the definition of a linear transformation. If f is a function with a domain uh, r n, I think formally it could be uh, really uh, any uh, vector space and then it has a co-domain over here let's say capital W so um, I, I just use RN and RM because typically that's kind of where we want to be um, but it, it doesn't necessarily have to, to be so we say in general or gen generically uh, we can talk about uh, one uh, vector space capital V uh, with vectors mapped from it to another vector space, uh, capital W. And then ideally we, we get to probably what we want, and that is to look at Rn and Rm, or to look at operators where you map from the one space to the, the same space, where Rn maps to Rn, R2, for example, maps to R2, or R3 maps to R3. But um, at any rate, if f is a function with domain Rn or some vector space V, and uh, with this co-domain Rm or some vector space W, then we say that f is a linear transformation. Simply means that f is the function, the transformation is a function uh, that maps vectors from one space to another space. It maps vectors, points, functions um, from one space to the other, and so. Um, we we look at this transformation uh, in terms of a function, uh, but mathematically we use the generic uh, uh, statement here. We have a transformation. Again, uh, the special case if n is equal to m, the transformation is called an operator, and we see this in differential equations when you deal with uh, the so-called uh, differential operator. And we'll look at that uh, here in just a moment, and I think it's fascinating. So uh, really from algebra, we're somewhat doing the same thing. And that is algebra, the, the goal is to study the function. So in linear algebra, the goal is to study the transformation. There's the transformation because here we're talking about not just one function, but several functions that form systems. So we have uh, vectors in the, uh, the so-called uh, domain. So let's say there's some little vector V in capital V and that it maps um, here into this function of this transformation to some vector w, little vector w, into this vector space w. So that looks like t of v is equal to, that's little, little w. And we'll have more to say about that. Now, and here's the thing. Um, you have this domain or this, um, this pre-image, which uh, the information here, the terminology should be very familiar. Uh, uh, with uh, you should be uh, from algebra that here a function maps um, uh, points from a domain to you we call that the range in terms of where we're going but uh, um, we want to be uh, very clear that uh, th that this range may not be all of W so so here this this range just may be this if it's all of W, then we talk about, we have a, a, a term for that, and it's called onto-ness, right? So, so these vectors over in the, the domain are being mapped into their image, uh, and we call that uh, the range. Home on the range. Maybe use black.
Okay, so now this theorem is important, just properties of matrix transformation. For every uh, matrix A, the, uh, the matrix transformation of T, where, where, where T is mapping vectors from, from Rn to Rm, and T does that basically by just the matrix multiplication of, of A. Uh, it has the following properties for all vectors u and v and for any, any scalar k. This first one is important and it's unfortunate that this zero mapping um, is overlooked and I recall uh, several times uh, with certain notions here and particularly with uh, abstract algebra that to prove certain notions uh, the key would be to, to find the zero mapping. Um, and, and maybe we'll, we'll bump into that as we go along, uh, if not this section, maybe perhaps the next section. Uh, but we have homogeneity and also additivity. Uh, the first is just the zero, um, and that's, you know, the, the standard zero, right? Uh, not from vector spaces where, you know, a zero can be redefined. I called it back in my talk theta because uh, zero sometimes doesn't look like zero. So homogeneity here is the same as the scalar multiplication. Uh, so the transformation part B uh, of, of the matrix A, uh, where you have a scalar times uh, the, the terms, um, uh, uh, a vector or uh, the terms from the matrix. You recall just from previous sessions, uh, you can uh, extract the common scalar out of a system. Um, uh, and so if it's a matrix or vectors, and we've seen that with vectors as well, uh, with um, uh, what we have called scalar multiplication. And then part C is no more than just a vector addition. So uh, they still say the same thing that uh, we're considering closure with respect to scalar multiplication and then also closure with respect to vector addition. So this was the closure for scalar multiplication. And this here was the closure with respect to vector addition. Okay. Cool stuff. Now this uh, theorem kind of says what the, the previous one says. It, it, it omits the, the zero mapping, which the zero map is important when we talk about the kernel, um, not the, uh, the kernel with um, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And it's interesting because I don't know, in Indiana, in Indianapolis, where I grew up, you know, my folk, they just said, you know, go to Kentucky Colonel and, and get me a two-piece. And you come down south, like, you know, Alabama, and, and people say, Kentucky Colonel? You're talking about Kentucky Fried Chicken. But anyway, um, sorry about that. So you have this transformation, T, and T is mapping vectors from one space to the other is a linear a matrix transformation if and only if the following relations uh, relationship holds for all vectors u and v and rn and for every scalar uh, k. Again, additivity, that is uh, vector addition and homogeneity, scalar multiplications. Here what I thought was interesting that both of these statements are developed into one axiom, uh, namely, uh, it's a very important axiom, uh, that uh, T of this linear combination, this transformation can be broken down into uh, its parts. That is the sum, the, the sum of its parts is the same as the, um, uh, the, the parts themselves uh, to be uh, added up. So um, here this is equal to C sub 1 comes out times T of, of U sub 1 plus and so on plus C sub n times the transformation of U of n. Now what they're doing is just taking these two axioms 
and just combining them together. Thus, this linear transformation is the definition for a linear algebra. What is the definition? Is really um, these two, right? This one and this one. Here, I just combined them. I combined them into one. Pretty cool. Uh, that is, a linear algebra must satisfy uh, vector addition and scalar multiplication. Um, sometimes this is referred to as linearity. A linear algebra must satisfy both vector addition and scalar multiplication. Notice how derivatives, this is fascinating. Notice how derivatives and integrals satisfy these two important principles, thus making them calculus, that is the derivative and the integral, a linear algebra. Let's see. Oh boy, calculus satisfies a linear algebra. Thus, um, well, let's keep on reading. I get excited and get ahead of myself because I don't really like to read, you know, I just like to talk. But notice the two properties of linear transformations, that is uh, the vector addition and scalar multiplication for derivatives and then secondly for integrals. So when you took calculus, you were also taking linear algebra. So, so the calculus is no more than just a subset or, if you will, a subspace of linear algebra. So uh, for, uh, for the derivatives, this capital D is referred to, we call it the derivative, but that's the same thing as a differential. This is the same thing, just a different way of writing it, right? Uh, so we're taking the derivative. So, the, so derivative of the sum is equal to the sum of the derivatives. That's fascinating. So when we did that, when we had a, a problem and, and a function and you took the derivative of that function, you went inside of that function and you started taking the derivative of its parts. What told you that? It's a linear algebra. That's what told you that. And that's the only reason. But it's necessary for us to understand that so we know exactly what we're doing. And, and not just like with an, an algebra class where I'm just plugging in numbers and I don't know what the heck I'm doing. You know, why did you do this? And, and, and does this answer make sense? Is it well defined? I don't know. It's just, I just did this or did that. What did you do? I just plugged it in. That, that doesn't make sense, right? So, you know, when you had examples like some uh, function 2x to the fifth minus 3x squared, uh, plus 21 and you took this derivative so you were applying the derivative on the 2x to the fifth see how you broke up that sum minus the derivative of 3x squared and then plus the derivative with respect to x of 21 you did that because um, you said that this was uh, these functions satisfy a linear algebra. So thus you get, you know, that derivative uh, to be 10x to the fourth minus 6x uh, and then that's it. Likewise, and, and for this particular problem, um, we have the, the constants as well because you, you could have simply pull the constant out, right? Fascinating. Pull the 21 out and then you have left just the derivative of 1 which is 0. So you get 0 times 21 which is just 0. So you could put the constant out in the front, right? And then take the derivative of the, um, this, the polynomial itself, the polynomial terms. The same thing happens for integrals. You, you remember that the um, that the integral of the sum is equal to the sum of the integrals, and likewise with uh, uh, with uh, scalar multiplication. So so we've been doing the the goal of linear algebra already in terms of algebra itself, and also in terms of of calculus. Very fascinating. Now, linear transformation is, you know, it's interesting you read these books and 
And, you know, I'm reading this stuff, and it's interesting because, you know, when I've, in college and in graduate school, I've taken so many courses in linear algebra. So, so I'm reading these books now, and I'm saying to the author, like, why don't you go ahead and just say it? You know, man, they, they write books like it's a movie. Mercy. You know, like a horror movie. You know, I mean, I mean just, why don't you run? Why don't you get out? Why don't you get in your car? But uh, I like the commercial they got out with the kids and stuff. I think it's a Geico commercial. Oh, man, that's funny stuff. But anyway, let A be an M by N matrix, the function T, defined by T of V is equal to A times X. That's the key right there, folks. That this linear transformation is no more than a, uh, it's the matrix multiplication. That's all they're saying. So these transformations, when you're mapping vectors from one space to another, um, uh, they're using a matrix, matrix multiplication to get you from one from the domain over to the um, uh, to the image or to the co-domain. Now, with that said, let's look at some problems here. Determine whether the um, the function is a linear transformation. What does that mean? We just uh, show the two properties. Uh, vector addition and scalar multiplication. So, so let let u be a two tuple vector, u sub one and u sub two, and v to equal v sub one and v sub two, both in R two. Well, here, this is the operator because we're, we're mapping to the same space. Let let's let C be a scalar. So the first we say to show here uh, T of U plus V is that the same as T of U plus T of V? We want to show that. Okay. So and it the transformation is of, of this form. Uh, for every uh, vector in the domain, the image has to be the, the first coordinate, and then the second coordinate has to be 7. Right? Kind of strange. So, so here we have, I'm just going to add u plus v, and that gives us u sub 1 plus v sub 1 comma u sub 2 plus v sub 2. So that's the sum, so I'm going to now do the transformation of, of u sub 1 plus v sub 1 comma u sub 2 plus v sub 2. Now according to this, this has to equal to the first component which is u sub 1 plus v sub 1 comma just 7. Right. Now let's look at the left, the, the right side, that's the t of u plus the t of v. So this is t of u sub 1 comma u sub 2 plus t of v sub 1 comma v sub 2. And that's equal to here the u sub 1 comma 7 plus v sub 1 comma 7. Now when we add that information together we get the u sub 1 plus v sub 1 comma, this gives us 14. So this is not equal to that T of U plus V. So that one fails. I'll just show this, the, the next one. If one of them fails, then you know automatically that um, it's not a transformation, right? And you can just stop and keep moving. But let's just look at, at the next one. Um, so, so we want to show T of C times U. Is that the same thing as C times T? T of U? Question mark. So T of C U is equal to here, this is C times, I'm sorry, forgot my T, T of C times U sub 1 and C times U sub 2, but that's equal to based on this information based on this guy, right, that has to be equal to 
c times u sub 1 comma 7. Now, c times t of, of u, leave the c on the outside, this t of u is u sub 1 comma 7, right? Now we multiply by the scalar, and that gives us c u sub 1 comma 7c. And that's not the same. Um, this is not the same as t of c of u. So, so thus you conclude that um, that uh, this t is indeed this function is not a transformation, okay? And, and that becomes the the order of how we do it. Now, let me look at this one because you know students will say, if I just work that first one and then work this one, they will say I can't do this one because it's so much different than that other one because this one right here is r two to r three, and I got these three terms over here, and what to do? It works the same exact way. You know, you do one, you do them all. Oh, oh yeah, cool stuff. So, so, so here uh, we must pick vectors in R two. So I pick the same format. Let let u um, equal to u sub one, u sub two, and v is v sub one and v sub two. both see where both u and v are in r2 okay so we show the first we show a uh, vector addition look at how the mapping is going boy i can't see see how the mapping is going so we want to follow that uh, follow that order right so first um, here to show we don't know equality to show that t of u plus v is equal to t of u plus t of v so so again this question so let's look at this left side this t of u plus v so this is t of, I'm going to add u plus v, so it gives me u sub 1 plus v sub 1, comma, u sub 2 plus v sub 2. And it's equal to, based on this order scheme, is 3 times the first component. So 3 times here, this first component to be squared. So that's u sub 1 plus v sub 1 to be squared. Can I see the 2? Doesn't look like a 2. Comma. Then the next one says it's the first times the second component. So, and these are the components here, right? So this is u sub 1 plus v sub 1 times u sub 2 plus v sub 2. And then that last one is 3 times the second component, 3 times this second component. Oops. Three times the second component squared. So this is three times u sub two. Man, I don't have space. Don't, I hate that. Okay. I've been showing my wife that. Um, um, I'm not going to say bad words, so um, she's been checking me on that. I know I'm a preacher, but, you know, you, hey. anyway, <laughs> use of one plus V sub one. I don't say like bad, bad words, you know, just the simple stuff. Shouldn't say it anyway. Use of one plus V sub one. I'm just being serious. Use of two plus, I'm just rewriting this. Um, and then times three times uh, u sub two plus v sub two to be squared. All right, so we've got to simplify that. So this is, ooh, baby, a lot of stuff, right? So write this as three times. This is u sub 
1 squared plus 2 times u sub 1 times v sub 1 plus v sub 1 squared. Close that up, comma, fold that out, u sub 1 times u sub 2 plus u sub 1 times v sub 2 plus v sub 1 times u sub 2 plus v sub 1 times v sub 2. All right, comma, let's set it here so much. Three times, got to foil this guy out. So three times u sub 2 to be squared plus two times u sub 2 times v sub 2 plus v sub 2 to be squared. Close that up and then close the whole thing up, right? So we have that. Now let's look at this t of u plus t of v and see if they're the same. So let's do the t of u. Um, we know what the terms are. This is u sub 1 comma v sub 1. That's u sub 1, u sub 2, excuse me. And then this is plus t of, that's the v sub 1 and the v sub 2. So now we work this out. So that first t, um, we do the 3 times u sub 1 squared comma the first time the, the first and the second multiply so that's u sub 1 times u sub 2 comma and then this is 3 times u sub 2 squared plus now we do the same thing for this guy right here so so this is three times the first component squared v sub 1 squared and then this is v sub 1 times v sub 2 comma and then three times v sub 2 squared now we add these two guys together and I bet you I cannot get all this stuff right there well I know I can't so um, interesting Lee, I need to work this out on another page and let's do that. So we have that T of U plus T of V and I think I better write it out again so I can see. So now we add that. This is 3 u sub 1 squared plus 3 v sub 1 squared comma u sub 1 u sub 2 plus v sub 1 times v sub 2 comma 3 times u sub 2 squared plus 3 times v sub 2 squared. Now is, is t of u plus t of v, is that the same as as t of u plus v? I, look, this guy is not, they're different. These terms are different. This is not the same as t of u plus v. Let's go back to t of u plus v. Now, now watch this. We're going to go back over here and look, but for the first components, for the first component, you're going to see this, but it's going to be something else there as well too. You're going to see these two guys, but it might be something else there. You're going to see this. And that, but for t of u plus v, it's going to be some added terms. Let's look and see. So we're looking at the um, the t of u plus v, and so uh, look for that for the t of u plus t of v. 
it had this term times a 3 and this term times a 3 but it did not have did not have this right so in green is what what the other term doesn't have so and then also um, it has this let's see here it had that guy and let's see I believe it has these guys and I think it does not have this term and that term right and then it has for that the last the third component it has this and then it has this guy times a three but it does not have that middle term that's not the color right so so we don't get equality So, so that failed, and then if you look at the the next term in terms of t of c u, is that equal to c times t of u? And so let's see. Here we have t of c times u sub one comma c times u sub two, and that gives us the the it's the first term times 3 and then we, we square so this is 3 times c u sub 1 to be squared comma multiply the two terms so we get c squared times u sub 1 times u sub 2 comma this becomes 3 times the second term squared the second term includes the c this is a c times u sub 2 squared alright now what about c times t of u. So this is c times this t of u sub 1 comma u sub 2. This is c times here. This becomes uh, 3 times u sub 1 squared comma u sub 1 times u sub 2 comma 3 times u sub 2 squared. Now let's run that 3, that c through there and we get 3c u sub 1 squared comma c times u sub 1 u sub 2 comma 3c times u sub 2 to be squared and you can see the difference so so here uh, for for the t of cu we get a for the first term we get a c squared right but we only get just one c here and then uh, for the first term we get the c to be squared basically and, and we don't get c squared for uh, the c times uh, uh, t of u so c is just um, just of the first degree All right so so we conclude here that this function is not a linear transformation okay all right. Um, here, just this last one, and then, um, as my friend Trey said from my childhood, just one more thing, and I'll let you go. <laughs> uh, let T uh, map uh, vectors from R three to R three be a linear transformation such that T of of one comma zero comma zero is equal to two four and negative one. T of 0, 1, and 0 is equal to 3, 1, negative 2, and then T of 0, 0, 1 is equal to negative 2, 2, 0. Find the indicated image. Find T of 2, negative 4, and 1.
Now I'm going to show you the, the way the book shows you and then I'm going to show you my way and my way basically kind of just it it makes sense to to put uh, I think teeth to what we've been talking about that if if the linear transformation is matrix multiplication well where in the heck is matrix multiplication right so so let, let me show you that and uh, I, I think I think that'll make you know sense but I, I will uh, first show you um, you, you, what you would see in terms of you know how the uh, how the book you know presents it basically what he's saying is can we write uh, the vector 2 negative 4 1 as a linear combination of the of the given vectors this vector here this vector there and that vector there can we write it as a linear combination well, well let's see um, well first notice that um, we can write the vector 2 negative 4 1 as a linear combination of of the first basis the basis that that, that has 1 0 0 0 1 0 and then 0 0 1 so we do that first so we say that this is 2 times 1 0 0 and this is minus 4 I'm just looking at these numbers and just writing them as a linear combination of the standard basis because uh, this image of t uh, this pre-image, that is the domain values of T, is just the identity matrix. So this is times 0, 1, 0, and then plus 1 times 0, 0, 1. Now, it, it's, it's more difficult if you don't have that standard uh, uh, basis, if you don't have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. It's a little bit more trickier. The fortunate thing for you all and for this book, he only gives you the simple stuff. You know, the old textbook, they didn't give you the you, this uh, basis here, the standard basis. They gave you different numbers and kind of made you sweat a little bit, but it was no problem because I developed methods to be able to solve it in a very easy fashion. Because yeah. the, the cool thing with linear algebra is... You, if you allow matrix multiplication, if you and then if you allow the graphing calculator, I can show you things that that the likes of which the world has never seen before. <laughs> so, so, so here, here's what they're saying. We're going to make use of when we say what's the linear algebra. What is it good for? The linear algebra says that if this is indeed a linear a linear algebra or a linear transformation, it says it's assumed. Uh, here let T be a linear transformation that means that T satisfies vector addition and scalar multiplication of which those previous two problems did not satisfy but since they satisfy that then we can on this setup here we can take the transformation of the entire thing and and because the transformation of the sum equals the transformation of the parts let's see how this looks and you can pull out scalars. So this is, I can't write, like, can't use that to write. Oh boy, this is funny. So, oh. this implies, you know, in math class, you got to be able to say that. This implies that T of 2, negative 4, 1, that's that left side, is equal to 2 times the transformation of 1, 0, 0, minus 4 times the transformation of 0, 1, 0 plus 1 times the transformation of 0, 0, 1. Now you got it because the image of these transformations are given, right? Boom, boom, and boom. All right, bingo, so we get it. So, and what we're looking for, we leave unknown until we get the right side. So. This implies that we have t of 2, negative 4, 1 is equal to 2 times the image of t of 1, 0, 0, which is 2, 4, negative 1, minus 4 times the image of t of 0, 1, 0, it's there, so we get 3, 1, negative 2, plus 1 times the image the, the t image of 0, 0, 1, 
which is times we're here now, that's negative 2, 2, and 0. So now we just work this out. This implies that we have t of 2, negative 4, 1 is equal to, let's run that through, if you will, run the 2 through so we get 4, 8, negative 2, um, you make it plus, and so this is negative 12, negative 4, and 8, plus negative 2, 2, and 0. And so we work this out. This, we get 4 minus 12. We get negative 8 minus 2, negative 10. 8 minus 4 is 4, plus 2 is 6. Negative 2 uh, plus 8 is 6, plus 0 is 6. Now it seems like a lot to do there. So what about matrix multiplication? Where where does that uh, come in? All right. Well, let me show you. When you say that t of a is matrix multiplication of A. I mean, don't tell me that in this section and, and then don't do it. You, 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 you see what I'm saying? So, so, so here's what we have. We have T of 2, negative 4, 1, which is what we're looking for, is the multiplication of, now those images here becomes columns, 2, 4, negative 1, and then 3, 1, negative 2, and then negative 2, 2, 0, times 2, negative 4, 1. Because 2, negative 4, 1 is in the domain. But T of that is in the range, or you call it the co-domain or the image. So now multiply this out. So we've got a 3 by 3 times a 3 by 1. The result is also a 3 by 1. So we get 2 times 2 is 4. Minus uh, 12 is negative 8. Minus 2 is negative 10. 4 times 2 is 8. Minus 4 is uh, 4. Plus 2 is 6. Negative 2 plus 8 plus 0. So negative 2 plus 8 is 6. We get the same thing. So so there has to be something when they say, and now again, this, you see how short my method is downstairs? Yeah, that's, that's not supposed to be like that. Come on, color. Yes. But it should be that easy. So uh, again, uh, in the book, you have this, and then you have my way. I give unto you a better way. I think the apostle says we have a more excellent way. <laughs> Was he thinking about linear algebra? I don't know. I don't think so. Look, I'm going to stop right there. I hope this helps. You all take care. Thank you.